Various techniques in the management of dropped nucleus A to Z. The authors have no financial conflicts of interest to disclose concerning the presentation. Cataract surgery is one of the most frequently performed surgical procedures in the world. The incidence of nuclear drop into the vitreous cavity during the cataract surgery is about 0.3%, which means 2 to 3 cases per 1,000 operations. When a nuclear drop happens, even for the experienced and talented surgeons, it is easy to get frustrated, having difficulties in managing the dropped nucleus. And as people calls for superhero in the movies, they might get to call for help to virial retinal surgeons. And just as the heroes from the movie must securely save the person in danger, the surgeons have to manage the patient successfully. There have been some controversies over the optimal time for the surgery. Nevertheless, a clear guideline has not been published yet. In case the cornea is in good condition, the surgery could be performed on the very day. However, when it is not the case or the OR room is fully booked, better post-operative outcomes can be expected when surgery is performed after having some recovery time for the cornea, rather than undergoing the surgery right away. But still, the surgery has to be performed within at least three weeks after the cataract surgery. Some considerations for post-operative outcomes are as follows. What kind of surgical methods should be used? When the IOL should be implanted? Other precautions will also be discussed in the following. Firstly, the general principles of the surgery are as follows. One. Complete vitrectomy should be performed first. Pars plan of vitrectomy must start with thorough removal of vitreous. Otherwise, retinal tear due to vitreal traction can be caused during the dropped nucleus removal. 2. If possible, optic disc and macula should be covered with perfluorocarbon liquids, PFCL. Otherwise, retina or optic nerve can be damaged by dropped nucleus fragments. 3. Although it is difficult to see the peripheral retina, a full peripheral search should be done to check for the retina tears and any remaining fragment of nucleus. A surgical method can be determined by the size and hardness of the nucleus fragment. With the development of various surgical instruments, 25 or 23 gauge instrumentation can be used in case of the small fragments of lens cortex. When the removal process is challenging due to hard nucleus, hybrid gauge vitrectomy with 23-25 gauge instrumentation can be performed. In the case of large nuclear fragments, the removal process with Occutome alone may take too long. In this case, two kinds of approach are available. The fragments can be floated anteriorly using PFCL or the fragments can be removed in vitreous cavity using Phragmatome or phaco handpiece. In case of a phacia or total nuclear drop, floating to interior chamber is preferred. However, when there is severe corneal edema, it is not so easy. Also, when IOL is already in sulcus or when several large nuclear fragments are dropped, Phragmatome or intravitreal phaco emulsification is better choice. In the following, Phragmatome and Intravitreal Phaco Emulsification will be compared. Phragmatome, a conventional approach of phaco fragmentation producing longitudinal vibration along with the tip, may cause tip clogging by nucleus fragment or repulsion of the fragments, ultimately resulting in intraoperative retinal tear or postoperative retinal detachment. Currently, more advanced and efficient intravitreal phaco emulsification technology using torsional ultrasound is available. In contrast to the conventional phaco emulsification with longitudinal movement, the new technology may enhance the followability of the nucleus and decrease repulsion of nuclear fragments, ultimately reducing the possibility of retinal tear or detachment and facilitating the surgical procedure. This is a case of traumatic hyphema and crystalline lens drop. The nucleus fragment could be easily floated anteriorly and removed with phaco emulsification. 
Also, there is no significant differences in size or diameter between two instruments. When a large volume